welcome welcome everybody how are you doing today it's very nice to have everybody here and today I wanted to speak a little bit about awakening and embodiment a while back somebody asked a question or requested that I speak a little more about what they call embodiment as a path to awakening you know and actually I want to clarify that right away to start with because I would not phrase it like that and the reason I wouldn't say embodiment is a path to awakening is because awakening is really a movement away from identifying oneself as anything and that includes identifying oneself as this body so in the process that leads to awakening you know our attention moves more and more and more and more inward away from the identification away from the gross perceptions you know and when i say gross perceptions i mean perceptions in which we perceive the world as solid in which we perceive objects and as, as solid objects and that of course includes this body so the the deeper we are the more we are interested in awakening the more we follow the desire for truth the deeper our attention moves inward and our perception becomes more and more subtle you know to the point and many of you know that already in which we begin to experience presence our true nature and we really are able to rest in the awareness of that and eventually we recognize that that is who we really are that we are not any of the objects that arise here including this body including this body mind so that process you know of coming into the more and more subtle perception is what leads to awakening and awakening itself is really that moment of recognition that who we are is beyond everything beyond everything we think beyond everything we believe beyond everything we experience so then what is the question of embodiment then you know what do i mean when i say embodiment because there may be many different understandings of that many different notions many different perceptions of that you know and I have to slow down for a moment because just speaking about awakening you know there's such a spaciousness that arises with that So when I speak about embodiment, you know, embodiment is before, during and after awakening. And what I mean by embodiment is a congruence between what we know when we sit quietly, when we sit in quiet meditation or when we sit, you know, when we know our true nature and what we know when we are moving in life when past arises when we are engaged in relationships in work you know if that is congruent with what we know in moments of silence you know and so often we make that you know there's that misunderstanding where we believe that the spiritual and our life are two different things right 
you know, you might not even know sometimes that you, that you do that, right? That you think, oh, this is my spiritual practice. This is my spiritual life. This is my spiritual pursuit. And then there is the rest of life, right? However, in truth, in reality, there really is no separation, right? You know, life arises in presence. You know, everything you experience arises in presence. So when I speak about embodiment, I mean, you know, what we know in moments of stillness, when we know that everything is okay just the way it is, when we know the spaciousness of presence, our true nature, you know, and then what happens when past arises, right? And when everything in your experience tells you things are not okay the way they are, You know, and in those moments, embodiment would be to an inquiry into that, would be the willingness to inquire and the willingness to recognize through inquiry eventually that in reality, in truth, everything is okay the way it is. And so that recognition then can be present not only when, you know, we are in quiet moment of meditation, but that recognition can be present throughout of any happening or any motion or any movement in your life. You know, and I speak about it before, during and after awakening, right? Because we might have this wonderful spiritual practice, you know, and spiritual time and quiet and satsang and, and expansion. And then we come to our life and there's reactivity, there's challenge, there, the past arises, there's, you know, uh, engagement. And that is, you know, there's some dissonance there or there's some discrepancy there, right? Like that quietude of our mm, you know, meditation or the quietude of the, the stillness of our true nature has not informed our moment by moment life. You know, and that challenge, and that's why I say before, during and after awakening, that challenge persists after awakening as well. Because as you know, awakening does not necessarily mean the end of all patterns of the past. No, it doesn't mean that, right? So, you know, it's a powerful shift from knowing yourself as this body, mind, to knowing yourself as presence. But at the same time, it doesn't mean past is over, right? Tendencies of the past remain or they continue to arise. And there is a need for that very, very diligent inquiry to really, 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 you know, um, remain in that spaciousness of our true nature. And that when past is here to recognize it for what it is, you know, because that's what freedom really is, right? Freedom is, you know, to recognize the past for what it really is and to really have the willingness to be here, right? You know, no matter what arises, right? A willingness to be here and be present to that, you know, so that the past has, you know, as it has arisen, it has a chance to subside. And then we know, you know, what to do, so to speak. We know the movement that naturally arises here, which is what freedom is, right? You know, and I remember after my own awakening when I was, traveling and teaching, hold, holding satsang, that there was a moment in which there was, a, you know, a moment of lack of willingness to be present to what is. You know, luckily that didn't last too long, but there was some misunderstanding, right? There was some, some place that wanted to hold on to the idea of awakening, which, you know, practically you can translate if at any point you're holding on to an idea of presence or an idea of future or an idea of, you know, uh, 
there, you know, when I am in meditation or there will be time, you know, when this and that, when you're holding on to that, you know, that's the past, right? And so there was a moment of wanting to hold on to the awakened state, which really, you know, that's an idea as well, right? You know, it's only what is here in a moment, right? So, you know, then that's what embodiment is, you know, moment by moment by moment. But then again, you know, if awakening didn't happen yet, don't wait until awakening, you know, begin now. Because so often I see that the impediment to awakening is because subconsciously we are still giving energy to the patterns of the past. And even though we have these moments and experiences of presence, you know, and, and spaciousness, and we know our true nature, and then, you know, we revert back to the identification, but not just to the identification, but also to the, you know, unconsciously, subconsciously supporting the beliefs of the past, you know, supporting that, right? So that's why when we sit together, you know, when we sit together, we not only sit in the spaciousness of presence, but we also address the patterns of the past and address that unconscious, you know, way in which we give it attention, in which basically in some way we still believe it, we still go by it, we still think this is how it is, you know, even though we already know the spaciousness of our true nature. So in that sense, embodiment is, is very important for awakening, right? Embodiment of the truth, that in truth, in reality, everything is okay just the way it is. You know, that in truth, in reality, who we are is the spaciousness of our true nature. You know, that in truth, in reality, you know, everything that arises is going to exist for a while and it's going to pass, right? You know, and we want to know that, you know, moment by moment by moment. And then, you know, that informs our life, that informs the way you relate, the, that informs the way you are in the world, that informs everything. So it's an embodied uh, presence, or it's an embodied awakening, or it's an embodied spirituality, you know, even before awakening, right? It's an embodied spirituality that doesn't have this dichotomy of, on the one hand, we know everything is okay the way it is, but when past arises, we really believe that and we really act on that and we really engage in that, you know, there's no real translation, right? So I really hope this is helpful to whoever was asking that question. That was a long time ago on YouTube and I wasn't able to record this sooner. I hope that is helpful. I welcome more questions about this. You know, you can write in comments and also, I want to invite you to join me in programs where we can interact live, you know, and that is really, really powerful when we can interact live together, experience presence together, and also experience that inquiry, you know, that really dismantles the past, that really, you know, takes apart the past and our belief in that, our adherence to that. And we do have a program coming up uh, September 17th, beginning, you know, three-week program. So come and join me. Please comment. Please subscribe. Please like. We really appreciate that. And I'm looking forward to next time and to seeing you in the program.